Hey, what's happening, guys? Dan Darrow here with another Options and Play video update. So, back in the saddle here, I uh, was gone for a little over a week and uh, come back. We got earnings season, which is like literally just about to get going. Um, anticipation always builds, I feel like, for this fourth quarter um, earnings period because there's always a ton of volatility into the year end. Um, obviously, you know what happened last year in the fourth quarter. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm back from a little vacation, feel rested, feel relaxed, I'm ready for earnings season. And it's like, hurry up and wait. Because uh, this week, as much as I would love for it to be jam packed, it's actually really pretty light from a scheduled news um, perspective. And uh, uh, yesterday we had our option session, so uh, didn't get the, the earnings on the radar video out because we were. We were um, going over uh, a ton of stuff after the close yesterday, so um, went over went, went over some of uh, the upcoming ideas we we'll are watching. Um, also went over uh, what I call the earnings prep pack. So um, if you weren't able to, to make the option session last night, um, please definitely go check that out because um, just talked about you know what kind of like my, my whole like game planning process around earnings. Um, what I'm looking at, what websites I use, um, some of the strategies I'm, I'm focusing on. So, so definitely um, go back and check that out uh, if you get a chance, all right? So um, this morning, Domino's, DPZ, Helen of Troy, um, they were actually two of the biggest um, anticipated movers for the week. Um, and Domino's actually opened down quite a bit and rallied to go green. And then, you know, what, what do you know, Helen of Troy – just about the complete opposite. It opened up a bunch and then rally uh, and then dropped to go red. So um, I don't know if it's a sign of things to come, but um, of like two of like the biggest expected movers of the week, both had really significant reversals during the day. So maybe something to take note of. Like again, you know, I don't know if it's going to be a, a pattern of of names that report over the next like week or a week or two. But um, like those were two two of the bigger names this week, two of the bigger expected moves, and two really significant reversals. So just something to keep an eye on. Uh, after the close today, Levi's. So the only name scheduled. Um, they're looking for about a dollar seventy-five or so. Um, it, it's really been a pretty lackluster IPO, um, and it's off of its August bottom down here, right? But still off over ten percent since last quarter. So I was right here. And actually, like those July numbers were were pretty solid, I felt, um, but the stock got hit pretty hard. So it's like the action has been kind of negative, although it has recovered in the, over the last month. But I mean, since last quarter, still down a ton, and it got hit really hard even after the numbers were okay last quarter. So I just feel like kind of like mixed signals. Um, the one thing I will say is that it did move just about three points in July. So here, so. Um, the options are priced in about $1.75, and, and those actually go through next week, so those are the monthly contracts. So it does seem as though um, the options are leaving a little bit of room, just based off of what it what it moved um, what, it, what it moved last quarter. So you know, I, I don't really have a strong opinion on it, but the option pricing not too bad, so maybe worth taking a look at. Um, plus, it's the only name scheduled tonight, actually, or tomorrow morning too, because Wednesday morning there's actually nothing even scheduled. Um, so kind of like fast forward to um, Thursday before the open. Um, actually, there's nothing after the close tomorrow night as well. So nothing before the open, nothing after the close. Um, Thursday before the open, you have Delta. Now, um, looking for about 210 to 220 in that ballpark. Um, definitely the biggest yield game curve of the steepens um, after I, I power suppose, marks. I, I, I suppose I, I probably would have been a little bit more interested in, in this name um, had they not given guidance last week. So that's why they dropped. Um, you can see right here that it, it dropped dropped pretty sharply. It's sitting in the middle of the 200 day. So that's because they gave preliminary numbers last week. Um, we traded this one into earnings last quarter and actually worked pretty well. It broke out, but a uh, lot's changed in, in a couple months. So from like a 52-week high, now down, it's not at a 52-week low, but it's underneath all of its moving averages. They already released preliminary numbers, um, and, and those are like the type of setups that I, I, I tend to avoid when they guide early because it removes um, some of that element of surprise, right? So 
Um, for me, um, a better way to approach this might be by going after like AAL, right? Um, so American Airlines or, or UAL, right? Two sympathy trades. And I mean, Delta's priced in about two, like 210, 220 in that ballpark. So maybe if it does have a move, those other two would move with it. Options are definitely going to be like lower price because um, they don't have a catalyst this week. So I, I don't love the Delta setup, um, but maybe you could take like a look at um, American Airlines or or um, AAL, right? So American Airlines or, or UAL, um, either of those might be a, a better way to approach it if you're thinking about doing something with Delta. All right. Um, after the close Thursday, nothing scheduled. And then last but not least, Friday before the open, we have Fastenal. So um, they're pricing in about two and a quarter. So I don't know if you're familiar with Fastenal. It's, it's a um, industrial parts supplier. Um, so this is going to be one of the first, actually the first um, industrial port for the quarter. Um, the, the chart to me, really nothing special. Um, kind of like back and forth, um, just chopping around um, above 30. Um, and from an option pricing point of view, they're not really cheap either because at two and a quarter, um, you know, that it, it kind of rarely moves more than that. So chart doesn't look great. Options pricing isn't great. Um, so I'm thinking of Void Fastenal, but um, similar to Delta, um, there are a couple peers that could move off of this and Granger, so GWW specifically. Um, this one tends to react to Fastenal numbers and, and actually over the last three quarters, um, it's moved, um, I believe anywhere from like six to 12 points off the, off the Fastenal number. So um, even though like the Fastenal chart doesn't look anything special and, and the options aren't cheap, um, it still could be a mover and it still could impact Granger and Granger tends to respond pretty well. So um, I'm thinking Granger might be the way to go after Fastenal. Um, plus, you know, there is a little bit of an element of surprise with that because um, that'll be like the first industrial report for the quarter. So we'll see what the numbers look like. All right. So um, again, kind of like a hurry up and wait for me. I'm ready for earnings season to get going, but um, we're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. Next week, things will really pick up very, very quickly. Um, just a ton of big names scheduled for next week. So it's going to be absolutely slammed. Um, so definitely keep an eye out Friday. I'll have that, that earnings on the radar video out so you can kind of game plan this weekend. Um, you know, maybe like get stuff on the calendar, kind of like uh, breakdown strategies and, and so on. All right. So uh, if you guys like these videos, uh, definitely follow up uh, with the link in the description um, for maybe more options and play ideas or, or, or just information. Um, you know, I always love to hear from you. So um, if you have any questions or comments about this video or, or just the trade in general, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, have a wonderful night. Best of luck if you're playing anything, and I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.